Hi, everyone, I'm Dr. Shin Young Yim. Today, I am going to tell you about the treatment of congenital muscular torticollis. There are two options in the treatment of congenital muscular torticollis, physical therapy and surgery. Medication is not usually used. This is the algorithm we have used for the treatment of congenital muscular torticollis in the Center for Torticollis. The primary symptom of congenital muscular torticollis is shortening of the unilateral sternocleidomastoid muscle. Therefore, the treatment of congenital muscular torticollis has three goals. 1. To gain normal symmetric range of motion in the head and neck by stretching the shortened sternocleidomastoid muscle. 2. To restore symmetric muscle strength of the neck muscle by strengthening exercise. 3. And to gain symmetry of the head, neck and trunk. When can physical therapy be stopped for congenital muscular torticollis? 1. The length of the muscle should be normalized, so that the head and neck can be rotated symmetrically. 2. No tilt of the head and neck with symmetric muscle strength. 3. And these two conditions must be maintained stable. 4. If the two conditions are met, surgery to remove the lump itself is not required in most cases, even when the lump still does not go away. 5. An exception is the case where the lump is too large to cause functional problem. There are recurrent cases after stopping physical therapy for congenital muscular torticollis. As children grow, the spines including the cervical spines grow. Therefore, the relation between the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the cervical spines can change. If the sternocleidomastoid muscle with congenital muscular torticollis is not able to keep up with the length of the growing spines, then it is recurrence. With recurrence, shortening of the unilateral sternocleidomastoid muscle becomes evident, causing limitation of motion of the head and neck again. The key factor of treatment of congenital muscular torticollis is to consider the dynamic relation between the growth of the cervical spines and the length of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. One or two follow-ups a year are necessary until about 36 months of age, during which the cervical spine grows rapidly. When can you say that the congenital muscular torticollis has been cured? Ending physical therapy does not always mean a cure of congenital muscular torticollis. For growing children, regular follow-up is needed to check any recurrence of congenital muscular torticollis. The things to be checked during follow-ups are 1. Whether the head is rotated well or not. 2. Whether the strength of the neck is symmetric or not. 3. Are these two conditions maintained stable? 4. And are there musculoskeletal abnormalities such as scoliosis and facial asymmetry? Let's talk about the lump of congenital muscular torticollis. Some people try to get the lump gone or decreased through massage or physical therapy. In many cases, the lump usually does not go away completely. Parents and people are worried about the lump itself of congenital muscular torticollis. In many cases, the lump of congenital muscular torticollis decreases in size, but it does not completely disappear. Even when the lump of congenital muscular torticollis seems to disappear, some amount of fibrosis remains within the muscle, seen by the ultrasonographic examination. It's not always good for the size of lump to decrease. This slide shows three adults with severe congenital muscular torticollis who needed surgery. The MRI does not show any lump but black signals in the sternocleidomastoid muscle, indicating large amount of fibrosis. What can be done with physical therapy in the treatment of congenital muscular torticollis? First, to gain normal symmetric range of motion in the head and neck by stretching shortened sternocleidomastoid muscle. Second, to restore symmetric muscle strength by strengthening exercise. What cannot be done with physical therapy in the treatment of congenital muscular torticollis? First, to remove the lump in the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Second, to convert a surgical case as a non-surgical case. In general, about 10% of congenital muscular torticollis require surgery. What are the surgical indications for congenital muscular torticollis? If the head and neck show limited range of motion even after sufficient period of physical therapy. If the craniofacial deformities, scoliosis or craniovertebral junction abnormality occur as a secondary complication of congenital muscular torticollis. Presence of one or more among four conditions is surgical indication for congenital muscular torticollis. 
surgery for congenital muscular torticollis is performed only when there are lots of fibrous tissue within the sternocleidomastoid muscle. However, since we can't directly look at the muscle tissue, we can get that information through the MRI. This slide shows four cases of congenital muscular torticollis with lots of low black signals on MRI. They got surgery done. All of them show short length of the SCM along with limitation of motion of the head and neck. The 5.7-year-old girl had left congenital muscular torticollis and underwent surgery. You can see that the left sternocleidomastoid muscle shows a large black signal of abnormal fibrous tissue, indication lots of fibrous tissue. This 9-month-old girl had left congenital muscular torticollis. The lump was too big to cause myelopathy by severe tilting the neck to left side, also indicating a surgical candidate. About when to perform surgery for CMT. Since the surgery for congenital muscular torticollis is usually done under general anesthesia, it is performed at the age of 6 months or older. The surgery for congenital muscular torticollis is not an emergency operation but an elective surgery. The surgery for congenital muscular torticollis needs to be done only with the clear indications for surgery. When the surgery is required, it is not recommended to delay the surgery until the any artificial age such as 18 months or 24 months. There is no rationale for the postponement of the surgery in the clear surgical cases of congenital muscular torticollis. Today, I have talked about the treatment of congenital muscular torticollis. I reviewed two options in the treatment of congenital muscular torticollis, physical therapy and surgery. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time.